that skateboard have a passion. They have a fire that burns. It's above and beyond a sport. This is something that it's right to the core of who I am. It's a personal thing. It's not a team sport. It's just about me and my board. Skateboarding has come a long way from the fringe sport it once was. In fact, it's pretty much everywhere now, and it's not just young punks doing it. They're fathers and mothers, people in their 40s and 50s who never let it go, and plenty of kids who might also be on the school soccer team. In just the last decade, skating rose up from the underground to the center of the neighborhood park. Something else happened too. Oregon became the center of the skateboarding universe. Guys from Hawaii, people coming from Europe and Japan to go skateboarding in Oregon. Who to thunk it? It's the new Mecca. Oh my God, how did we get here? <laughs> you know, and that's really the $64,000 question. Oregon today is to skateboarding what Hawaii is to surfing. And it's not just a city thing. It's in small towns like Klamath and Burns. Across Oregon, you can find kids skating for gym class and adults building skate pools in their backyard. And you'll see plenty of massive, publicly funded parks that are the envy of skaters everywhere. It's amazing considering skateboarding's humble roots. These steel wheels, um, you ride this for a few minutes and it's like magic fingers or whatever the... Howard Weiner, a Portland skate shop owner, spent the 1960s sneaking runs down Portland's Mount Tabor trying to avoid the police. It wasn't that many years ago when you, got, you could get up to a $2,500 fine for riding your skateboard um, in downtown Portland. So uh, we've come a long ways. Skateboarding was always the sport done by kids who didn't do sports. Skaters shun coaches, rules, and teams. They congregate on streets and parking lots. And they were constantly being chased off private property. Skating wasn't really legal in most places in the 1980s, public or private. And if you did it enough, eventually you'd face arrest, as Tristan Bailey experienced on more than one occasion. That established for me what I felt was the perception of skaters. I'm a vagabond. I'm some little snotty-nosed punk that you can't trust with your daughter on a date. Chances are I'm going to have to break into your car to get some money so I can go and get some drugs, so I can go skateboard. I had no clue that this was going to happen in Portland, much less all over the Pacific Northwest, until Burnside happened.